every second, the sun generates a million times the energy that humanity uses in a year. The revolution in space, like a decade ago, was dramatically lowering the cost of launch via reusable launch vehicles. That opened the aperture in fundamental ways for what we can do in space. That's not the revolutionary thing for the next decade. The main issue that we haven't solved in the space industry today is there is not enough power. Satellites are the fabric that underpins our daily modern lives. We have GPS, we have weather forecasting, we have signals that power all of banking around the world. Satellites are just like a home in the middle of the desert that's not hooked up to anything. Imagine if your house didn't have outlets. Imagine if in order to run your dishwasher, you had to turn off your AC. They have all these satellites floating around in space. They unfortunately have to make really hard decisions on what to keep on versus what to turn off because they only have a limited amount of power generation. At first glance, people think, well, there's an infinite amount of energy in space, right? Because there's the sun. It's essentially the only power source that people really rely on in space. It powers all the space stations, it powers all the satellites, and Starcatcher intends on using it too. The sun is the bedrock of our existence. So our fundamentals of like living and working and existing on the planet are all enabled by the sun. What Starcatcher does is we're building a constellation of satellites that collect energy from the sun and then condition it down into wavelengths that those solar arrays really like to consume. And that's what we transmit to the client satellite. We want to make it just as easy to get power as it is here on Earth, where we just plug in our phone or our factory right into the wall and we get as much power as we need and we can scale it up and down. The Starcatcher network consists of power nodes. These are giant satellites, and you can think of these as power plants here on Earth. In space, what's going to power the power nodes is the sun. We have this giant source of incredible energy. But it's not everywhere. And on the backside of the Earth, it's really dark. If you can bridge that gap and provide power into times when otherwise there would be none, you can greatly expand the schedule that you can do your high value tasks. Imagine in a sense, a lot of potential suns all over. So no matter where they are, they could always be getting energy. When you plug into the wall at your home, you can just ask the grid for more power. The idea behind Starcatcher is to give you a grid that you can just ask for more power. And we can provide that power where you otherwise wouldn't have gotten it. I want to make it as easy for us to operate in space as it is for us to operate on the ground. Power equals capability. The more energy that you have on a spacecraft, the more you can do with it. The average satellite in low Earth orbit operates on like 1,000 to 1,500 watts of power availability. That's essentially the amount of power that your refrigerator at home uses. In order to do direct-to-cell communications, in order to do orbital data centers and, and AI machine learning and operations on orbit, we'd like to have about as much power as a house has. So the sun, it sends out all kinds of wavelengths in all kinds of directions, which is great because a lot of those hit Earth and allow us to have life. But a lot of those photons are all over the place and they're not efficiently used by spacecraft today. What we do is capture light through lightweight lenses, concentrating the light. We feed it through our optical system that we can then filter to optimize for the wavelengths that we want to deliver and deliver those directly to a client's spacecraft, to their existing solar panels, so they don't need any custom receiver, they don't need any retrofit, and we do our own tracking so we don't need to communicate with those spacecraft either. So it's important that the Starcatcher network is backward compatible so that we can service the over you know, 13,000 satellites that are currently in orbit today. We want to be able to beam power to the triple junction solar panels that the majority of these client satellites have to enable their missions as well. In space, low Earth orbit satellites, they use what are called triple junction solar panels. They need to squeeze every possible watt out of sunlight they can. So each of these junctions is a different semiconductor material, and each of them targets a different section of the light that the sun produces. And those solar rays have pretty fundamentally and unique properties that if you put a higher intensity of light on them, 
they actually will, in a fairly linear way, generate more power. So if I double the intensity of light I put on a solar array, it'll double the amount of power it puts out. Three to 10 suns is the current estimate of the multiplication of power uh, that we would be able to provide to set client satellites. To accomplish that, we used multiple wavelengths of light at the same time to transfer that power. As far as I know, that's not something that's really ever left the lab. It's been done in a few papers. It's not something that has been done at this scale. Today, we are at the launch and landing facility here in Cape Canaveral in the Kennedy Space Center. This demo is to prove long distance power beaming at very high levels of power. We went from beaming across a football field to beaming across a runway. We've beamed to customers and we've shown end to end how to power beam to a payload and operate at the same time. Three, two, one, beam on. Yeah. Over a kilowatt of power, over a kilometer in distance, we have set a world record. It's testing a system that we designed on panels that we expect to see in space. These are very representative of what's up there right now. We can power these, we can power satellites. We're gonna take that to space. And through a series of demonstrations in space, show that we can beam power from one satellite to another satellite, you know, tens, then hundreds, then thousands of kilometers away. And then finally, we'll get to that running phase where we have our full up power nodes that can deliver dozens of kilowatts of power over thousands of kilometers in distance to tens of customer satellites simultaneously and build out that entire network and deliver a world of power abundance in space. What I'm most inspired by with this mission in particular is the fact that it is so universal to all satellites in orbit right now. This applies to all those industries, all the different use cases that there are for space. This is something that every single one of those people wants to tap into. We are on a very rapid schedule and moving quickly because this is a need that the industry needs now. And every day that we wait is a day we're holding back the industry. We are the right team and this is the right moment that the past decade brought us low cost and plentiful access to space. The next step is plentiful access to power in space, and that enables the fantastic future that we all hope for and that will enrich our lives, enrich our security, enrich the future.